Hello everybody, welcome to another C++ tutorial. So today we're going to look at uh, loops, but first I just want to point out, this is just uh, one way to think about programming computers. There's sort of three different parts to it. Uh, there's instructions and statements, and we've looked at a few of those. We've got plus plus, minus minus, C out, or the return statement. Uh, there's data, that's the variables, your, your integers and your floats and your doubles, your bools. Uh, but there's also control structures, so we're going to start looking at control structures today. Uh, one of the most common types of control structure, structure is what's called a loop. And basically it comes down to this. By default your code's going to execute one line after another from top to bottom. But sometimes you want to repeat certain sections of your code over and over again until a particular condition is met. Maybe the condition is that the user hit the quit key or, you know, something like that. You want to keep looping your program round and round and round. Maybe you're counting up or down. I don't know. But we're going to look at two loops today. In C++ we got the while loop and the do while loop. They're pretty similar. Let's just get started. So the while loop is fairly basic. All you do is you say the while keyword and Visual Studio is going to paint that blue for us. You follow that with brackets and inside the brackets you put a boolean statement, a condition. So right here my condition is that the variable option double equals zero. Remember that it's double equals for a condition, not single equals. If we put single equals there, it's going to actually move the value zero into the variable option, and it's actually going to stop the loop straight away. Anyway, you put um, a code block after that. Straight after that, I've opened up a code block. You know, you can put this brace on the line down here. You can indent it or not indent it. Yeah, the style is completely up to you, but that's a while loop, the basic syntax to a while loop. And this is what happens, the actual order of steps. So the very first thing that happens is that the condition is checked. If the condition is true, uh, the code block will be executed. But if the condition is false, then we'll immediately jump out of the out of the while loop and we won't execute the code block at all. It'll come down here to line 5 or so. Okay, provided the condition was true and we just finished executing the code block, uh, we're going to come down here to step number 4, which says repeat from step 1. So we come back here, we check the condition. If it's true still, uh, we execute the code block again. And uh, otherwise, if it's false, we jump out. So what you might be able to see is that it's just going to keep going round and round and round in circles until the condition is false. But the other important thing to note is that it's only going to uh, stop going round and round in circles if the condition is false when it checks it. Uh, it doesn't check it in the middle of the code block. So if you temporarily change your condition to false in the middle of your code block, but you change it back to true again by the time the condition is checked, then uh, you know the while loop isn't going to know that it was temporarily changed to false. Yeah, it's not a big deal, but some people have expressed confusion over that in the past, so yeah, just be careful. The condition has to be uh, false by the time it checks the condition, otherwise it's going to keep going through the loop. Okay, the do while loop. Now this is really, really similar, but you might have noticed on the previous slide there that the very first thing that happens with a while loop is that the condition is checked. So if the condition is false, the do while loop, oh sorry, the while loop is never going to execute the code block. Uh, yeah, the do while loop on the other hand is guaranteed to execute the code block at least once. Uh, this is the syntax just here. We put the do keyword and then we open up a code block. And after that, we put our condition with a while keyword. So here my condition is that option does not equal zero. So this do while loop is going to keep looping round and round and round uh, until somewhere in the body of the loop we set the variable option to zero. Then it's going to stop. It's going to break. That's what they say. I mean, it's not literally going to break, but it's going to stop, stop the loop. Yeah, to jump out of a loop is called to break. Uh, Okay, so the exact order of steps for a do while, and we can see from this exactly why it's guaranteed to execute the code block at least once. Uh, the very first thing that it does is it executes the code block. The second thing it does is checks the condition. So it's sort of a backwards version of the while loop. The while loop began by checking the condition, and there's no guarantee that it's going to execute the code block at all. But with the do while loop, the first thing it does is executes the code block. Okay, so after it's checked the, checked the condition, it sort of behaves pretty much the same as a while loop. If the condition's true, then it repeats. If the condition's false, then it jumps out of the loop. So it'll be down here at line number five. And that's pretty much the difference between a, a do while loop and a while loop. It's just um, the do while is guaranteed to execute the code block. 
and the while loop mightn't necessarily execute the code block. Okay, so I mentioned breaking in loops a minute ago. Uh, to break in a loop is to jump out of the loop without even checking the condition. So, yeah, here we've got a little example of exactly that. The break is a keyword. Visual Studio is going to paint it blue for you because it's a keyword. Anyway, int option equals negative one. And then I've got a while loop. And my while loop says that while option does not equal three. So uh, option initially is negative one. That's certainly not three. So the the condition option does not equal three is true if option is negative one. Uh, then in the body of the loop, we print out some little instructions for the user. Me in this case, I'll be the user. Uh, then we read a number from the user using cin, the extraction operator, and our variable option. And if the user types zero right there, uh, if option double equals zero, then we break. And that statement just there, if that executes, um, the condition isn't even going to be checked. Uh, none of the rest of the code block is going to be run. Nope, the computer's going to jump straight out of the while loop down the bottom here. It's going to break the while loop. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we didn't type zero, say we typed something else, maybe we typed four, um, if option double equals zero is not going to run, because option's four, uh, this one's going to run. Else see out, you typed, and then it's going to say four, and then the computer will come down here to the end of the body of our while loop, and it's going to see that it's finished. So it's going to jump back to the top here, and it's going to say, um, does four not equal three? Well, that's certainly true. Four doesn't equal three, so it's going to run the loop again. Uh, the other thing that we can do is uh, here for our option we could type in three and this is what's going to happen if we type in three it's going to go um, does option equal zero it's going to go nah uh, it's three uh, so it's going to run this one once again and it's going to see out you typed three to the screen then it's going to reach the end of the while loop it's going to jump back up to the condition and it's going to say does three not equal three and it's a weird way to think about it, but, uh, you know, 3 does equal 3, so the statement, does 3 not equal 3, is false. Uh, yeah, so that statement's false, and it's not going to execute the body of the loop anymore. Nope, it's going to jump down here, and keep executing from after the loop. Okay, so that's the break keyword, that's uh, while loops and do while loops, but if we come over to C++, I've got some puzzles. Okay, three little questions here. Count from 100, or count to 100 using a while loop. Uh, count from 45 to 0 in fives using a do while loop. And count the first uh, six powers of seven, so from seven to the power of one all the way to seven to the power of six. Uh, I'm going to do these in a second, but it's probably going to be pretty good. If you want to have a go yourself, just pause the video. Uh, okay, that's enough time. I hope you paused it and had a go, but it's up to you. Uh, this, this is just one way to do it. There's a billion ways to do any one of these things, but this is one way to do it. I can count to 100. Oops. Handle. Um, okay, so right there, um, I've got an integer, I set it to 1 at the start, and while that integer is less than 100, uh, we print this line out here, and actually that's not going to stop at all, I forgot to do one thing, and that's increment the integer, yeah, the integer's got to go up at some point, otherwise it's always going to be less than 100. Okay, so that should just about do it. Uh, now you might have used um, int i equals 0, and while i is less than 100, and that's going to loop a hundred times, but it's not going to count the number um, 100. It's going to go from 0 all the way to 99. Um, but that's a good answer as well. You know, that's pretty close too, so I don't know. I'd pay full marks for that if I was marking. Anyway, let's see how we go. Whoa. Ah, there we go. I can count to 100, and it does too, to prove it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... All the way down to 100. So that's uh, how you would get a computer to count to 100, exactly the way a human would if you ask them to. Humans don't tend to start with 0. Yeah, they start with 1. Anyway, so uh, count 
from 45 to zero in fires with a do while loop. Okay, this is one way to do this. Again, there's a million ways to do any of these, but this is one way. We can use the same integer that we set up a minute ago. You don't have to. Okay, so for a start we want to print the numbers out. I mean, I didn't say that in the instructions, but I might as well. We want to print the numbers out. Uh, the other thing that we've got to do is each round we've got to subtract uh, 5 from the number, because we want to count backwards in 5s. And the final thing that we want to do is stop our loop from repeating forever. Uh, yeah, if i has been subtracted to below 0, then we don't want to keep going through the loop. We want to stop. So that should just about do that. Let's have a look how we go. Aha! Here we go. So it's this one down here, just below the I can count to 100. And it's doing exactly like we hoped. Uh, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, blah, 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 all the way to zero, then it stops. Yeah, so that's one way to count backwards in 45s to zero. You know, you can change this to anything. You can have it count backwards in sevens if you like. Just by changing it, we can change it to 75. Why not? You know, why not? Count backwards in whatever you want. Okay, the final one, uh, the powers of 7. This is another... Yeah, this is just one way to do this. I'm actually going to set up another variable to do this. I'm going to call it Q. No real reason, just call it Q. Pretty bad naming, but I don't know. Oh, 7 to the power of i oops, equals q. Um, okay, so I'm going to use i to count from uh, 1 to 6, exactly like we did in that first uh, example that was counting from 1 to 100. I'm only going to count up to 6 this time. And each time we loop through this loop, I'm going to multiply... Uh, Q by 7, which will give us the exact answer that we're looking for. Uh, the other thing that we've got to remember is that at the moment I isn't counting up, so we've got to, yeah, we better make sure that it increments. You could put this um, I plus plus over here as well. You could make that I plus plus if you like. Yeah, completely up to you. Let's have a look how we go. I equals 45. Oh, yeah, that's a stupid loop. I put a big number in that, the bottom of that other loop. Anyway, um, this is the one that we're looking at here. So 7 top, 7 top the power of 1 equals 7. 7 to the power of 2, or 7 squared is 49. 7 cubed is 343. 7 to the power of 4 is 2401, etc., etc. So that's the uh, 6 powers of 7 just there. And that's one way you could solve those little puzzles. And uh, that's about all I wanted to say on while loops and do while loops for the time being. So thank you for listening. See you later. Options.